You're listening to episode number 51. Welcome to the Inner Singer Podcast. Providing tools and techniques to strengthen your inner singer, your beliefs, your confidence, your mindset. And now, your host for the Inner Singer Podcast, Mike Goodrich. Well, hey there, everybody. This is Mike Goodrich, and thank you so much for listening to the Inner Singer Podcast, episode number 51. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm so happy that you guys are listening. I just checked my stats, which I do every once in a while just for fun, and I'm it looks like it's I'm on my way, or the Inner Singer podcast is on its way to having the most downloads this month than ever before. So I'm a little late with this one. I'm sorry, I've been very, 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 very busy. Just finished up today. My wife and I teaching um we teach at our homeschool co-op. And two of the classes we teach are Kids Glee and Glee for the Teenagers. We call it Glee, but it's kind of a musical theater thing. And um, they had their performance today, both both group of kids, and it was awesome. In the in the one with the little ones, I played piano for the first number, and then uh, guitar for the last number, and that was really fun. I was a little nervous. I'm always I always get nervous when I play piano in front of people because um, I can fake it pretty well for for teaching voice. But when the stakes are high, I don't really consider myself a piano player, so I um, I get a little nervous. But I had to do I had to practice what I preach and just kind of go for the fun of it, and I really had fun. I had a really really great time. But I, my hands were a little sweaty, that's for sure. Even though I don't think anybody was really listening too much to me, but um, yeah, it's it's kind of fun to be in a position once in a while like that to have to say, okay, well, what do I talk about? Where can I go here? I can either get nervous and think it's just about me or just really have a lot of fun with it. So I had a lot of fun with that and had a lot of fun playing guitar. And the the, uh, the shows went just great. The kids were awesome. Really, really reminds me and reminded my wife of, you know, really the fun that's involved in this. Seeing these kids anywhere from, I think the youngest in the in the class that my son is in, I think the youngest is probably nine, eight, nine, something like that. The oldest probably 11. And then the uh, the older class up to up to about seventeen, I think. And just to watch the joy and the fun and and the dreams that they have about life and and the the, the aliveness is so exciting and fun and joyful to be around. They haven't gotten jaded. They're in it for the right reasons, and uh, it's really great. So many people that I have seen over the years start like that. And then as the stakes get higher, you know, they start losing the joy and they come to me and they're kind of say, well, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. And then they ask me oftentimes, you think I should do it? Should I just quit? Am I any good? And, you know, I, I the first question I always ask them is, is it fun? Do you love this? And, you know, oftentimes when they get to that point, it's like, well, no, that's the problem. It's not fun anymore. Well, why isn't it fun? Because now it means something. Now it means something about me. It's no longer just an expression of my joy and my being. Now it means something about me. If I don't do this well, there's something wrong with me. And now there are criteria that I have to meet, and I feel like I'm being judged, and I feel like I'm judging myself. And, you know, it it really is always about getting back to the joy of singing. And the reason that we started doing this in the first place, the stakes weren't high. When my little boy who sings 24-7, and now I know why there's soundtracks in movies, right? I think I've said this before. There's a soundtrack in his life and he creates it because he's always humming or singing or doing something. He's run. There's always a soundtrack for what he's doing. <laughs> so, um, or making uh, lightsaber noises or something. Anyway, there's always a soundtrack. But, you know, that's how we are. That's how we start. We start expressing ourselves. And it doesn't mean anything about us. You know, when we start singing initially, it means nothing about us. Isn't that funny? We just sing for the joy. We make sound because it's fun to make sound. And there's no identification with this means something about me. If I miss that note this means something. If I get that note, this means something. I mean, when he's singing, he he hits a high note and he just wails like a little rock singer. 
and sometimes he'll miss it and his voice will crack and he just laughs. I, it doesn't mean anything. It's so fun to watch somebody sing when it doesn't mean anything except the joy of expression. Now, I know probably a lot of things, and this, I, by the way, this, is, this wasn't even going to be the subject of the podcast today. I'm sure I'll get to what I was going to get to. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, there, there could be those out there listening and thinking, well, yeah, no, that's easy for a nine-year-old to sing and have it not mean anything. But how do I go out and perform a lead on Broadway or sing at my friend's wedding or do karaoke in front of all my friends who know I've been studying voice, or record this song that I just wrote. How do I do all those things and have it mean nothing? You know, Mike, you're just like totally out of the box here. It means something. It has to be good. And I get that. You know, I totally understand. But I also understand that the more it means on that level, the less fun you're going to have and the harder it's going to be. We really do have to just to kind of accept that if we begin to identify too much with this as who we are, as meaning something about our capabilities or our value in the world, that we're going to be perhaps derailed. And not derailed in a bad way, but maybe derailed in a way which, you know, just suggests that it's not so much fun anymore. And we start losing the joy and the fun of this. So, yeah, I, I actually am suggesting that if we could get back a little bit more, no matter, no matter how high the stakes appear to be in our career, no matter how high they appear to be for the world, seriously, whether you're on Broadway, whether you're in a re- major recording person, whether you're singing at a wedding or karaoke, or just singing for your family, or just singing for yourself in a room, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the stakes are. It matters what you think the stakes are. Because, you know, you can be performing on Broadway and having the time of your life, or you can be singing at karaoke and being completely miserable because it means too much. And you can be really good either time, right? It's the meaning you give it. And it's the meaning you give it reflecting back to the meaning you give it about what it means about you and your value, and your worth, and your worthiness. And that's all I'm saying. I'm saying the more we can detach from this meaning anything about our essence and of who we are, anything about our value on the planet, anything about our worth, the less, the more we can detach from that and get back to this childlike attitude of, Singing just for fun. Singing because it feels good. Singing to make sound and express our soul and express ourselves and express our joy and our life and our energy and our vitality. The more we can get back to that, I think the more we're going to enjoy singing at whatever level, right? I think, I think the higher level we perceive we are at, the more roadblocks we throw in front of ourselves. And the more we say, this should mean something, because I'm at this level now. But when do we graduate to a level where we decide that it needs to mean something and be more important? You know, is it the first time we sing at somebody's wedding? Is it the first time we stand up for karaoke? Is it the first time we record a song that we wrote or a cover song? The first time we do a YouTube video? The first time we appear on Broadway? I mean, when is it? When, where have we set the bar? Where have we set this standard that, okay, when I get to here, it's going to begin to mean something and I'm going to start losing the fun because now the stakes are too high. Where is that set in your life? Is it set somewhere? Or are you aware of where it's set? There's a keen way to become aware of where it's set because you will feel yourself getting nervous. You will feel yourself getting afraid. You will feel yourself feeling like, uh, I better be really good or that perfectionist thing kick in. You'll feel when all of a sudden, oh my gosh, this means something. And believe me, when I say all these things, I'm talking to myself too. I've told you many, many times, I don't sit on a cloud somewhere, you know, talking down to people. That's no, that's not what I do. 
I sit on a level playing field talking to you, saying things that I need to hear. You know, we teach what we need to learn, right? I I don't have all this under my belt. I have tools, you know, and that's what I want to share with you, tools. You know, when I did the, uh, the little piano thing today, right? I played one piano song. And quite frankly, it's something that I can do in my sleep, right? And yet my hands were still sweaty, and I still kind of goofed up the beginning. I don't think anybody heard, but I was nervous. And then, you know, after I kind of got that out of the way, I let go and I really had a good time. And the same thing with the guitar. I didn't make any mistakes on the guitar, but my hands were real sweaty, and I started off probably not as confident And once I felt my hands actually forming the chords, and I've played forever, right? Once I felt my hands actually forming the chords, I had some fun. I really got into it and I had a really, really good time. But it really helped to be performing and experiencing with the kids. Because the way we teach, the way we teach the kids, we don't don't set them up to fail. We don't set them up with any huge high expectations. And I'll tell you what I mean. Last semester, the little kids, the the younger group, just nailed it. They just brought the house down. They sang from Matilda, a couple of songs. And when they did Revolting Children, they nailed it. And the audience just stood up and went absolutely berserk. It was so good. They were so cute. They were so amazing. I mean, it sounded like the Broadway cast. And so I made it a point, and I talked to one of the parents today before the show today, I made it a point not to tell the kids what the audience would be expecting. I did not, well, Here's what I did not do. I didn't say, okay, guys, you nailed it the last time. The stakes are really high. So the audience is really expecting a lot from you. You guys got to pull together and just nail it this time. That's what I did not say. I just want to be clear about that. I did not say that because I did not want to set them up I didn't want to set up any fear in their mind for a false expectation and for the expectation that this is hugely important and means something and that you have a standard to live up to because you did a good job the last time. I mean, that's sort of a negative. um, That would be very, very negative. Wow, you did a great job last time. Now you really got to nail it this time. I mean, that's not really a way, in my mind, to hugely motivate or inspire somebody. That just says, okay, you were great last time. Don't mess it up this time. I mean, really, because that's the energy behind that, right? If you say, wow, you did a great great job last time. Boy, the audience is really expecting a lot. You got to nail it this time. You know, the energy behind that, not the words, but the energy is you better not mess this up because you nailed it the last time and they're, they're expecting a lot from you guys. So that's what I did not say. And I did not want to plant that in their minds. I'm stressing that I didn't say that, right? Neither did my wife. What we did say was you guys were amazing last time and you had so much fun. Let's go out there and have the same. Let's go have more fun this time. Let's just have the best time ever. And my little boy would say, well, I'm, I'm really excited, but I'm kind of scared. And I said, you know, it's totally okay to be scared. I said, I'm scared. I'm a little nervous. I have to play the piano and the guitar. I said, listen, If I mess up the piano, everybody's going to hear it. And if I mess up the guitar, everybody's going to see it. But if any of you guys on stage miss a step or forget a word or something, you know, odds are nobody's going to know anyway. It's not a big deal, right? That's what live theater is. I've messed up a million times. Everybody messes up. It's part of live theater. So let's just go have a great time and have fun be the key thing. Let's go have fun. And everybody just had a great time and they totally nailed it. And it was fun. And I, I did great. I had a great time. It was fun. Um, so anyway, my point being, when do we decide that it means something? And I think it's really important to kind of look at that and get back to the fun of all this so that, you know, we, we, we distance ourselves from this belief that, we are our voice, or we are how we did, or you're only as good as your last performance. Remember that? Have you all heard that? I'm sure you have. Oh, you're only as good as your last performance. Well, that's nice to say to somebody, huh? 
that's really identifying with you're you're not a you're not even a person you're you know you're only a performer and you're only as good as your last performance well that's just really not true of anybody right so if we can get back to having just the ability to express ourselves for no reason except that it just pours out of us and as we can begin to pour that into our singing you know that's in the old days where you know, all the riffing that's done these days, and by the way, in my mind, you know, <laughs> pardon me, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I mean, come on, it's way overdone these days. Riffing back in the old days meant something. There was an emotion behind it. It was when there wasn't a word to convey that emotion. No line was written to convey that emotion. And that's when the riffing came in. Now, everybody starts their songs with this, oh, you know, what does that mean? You know, it. I, I don't even know. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but it's my podcast and I can do that if I want to, right? <laughs> so, it, it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be organic. Let it just pour through you. When's the last time you sang and it just poured through you and you had no judgment about it? And you just didn't have any stakes and you didn't have to satisfy any criteria and you didn't have to perform, and you didn't have to be great or wonderful, and you didn't judge yourself, when's the last time you allowed yourself the joy of expressing like my little boy does who just sings and sings and sings and sings and then plays with his lightsabers, and then sings more and sings more and sings, and then writes songs and does all these things, but it doesn't mean anything about him. When's the last time you or I allowed ourselves to do that? Seriously. And if it's been a while, you got to create some space in your life for that. You really do. Rarely do I say you should do this or you have to do this, but you really, if you're a singer and you're to the point where you don't have that creative outlet and that expression to sing when it means nothing, you've got to create that for yourself. Somehow you have to make the space for that in your life. You can't just sing when it means something. You cannot just sing When the stakes are high, you cannot just sing when there's a huge criteria to meet and conditions to satisfy. You have to create the space in your life to sing for no reason, for it not meaning anything about you. And if you have trouble finding that space, here is actually what I was going to talk about in the first place. And let me look down here. So we're 17, we're 17 minutes into this podcast, and I have not even addressed the actual topic that I thought of because I turned on the mic and away I went, right? But what I was going to talk about won't take much time anyway. And it's a term called activation energy. And activation energy I read about when I was reading the um, Sean Acor book, the, um, oh goodness, oh, it's about positive psychology, the happiness advantage. There you go. I'm glad I remembered that. And he talks about something that I did, actually. He said he plays guitar. And I, if I've mentioned this in a previous podcast, uh, forgive me, but it, it bears repeating, and I, I haven't mentioned it in this regard anyway. Um, he said he plays guitar, and so what he did, he found himself just never playing guitar. And he loves to play guitar, and he wanted to get better. But his guitar was locked away in the closet, right? And so what he did is he bought himself a, a guitar stand, and he put the guitar on it, out of the case, and, you know, put it kind of in his line of fire where he would be walking from one place to another to the kitchen or whatever, so he would constantly see it. And it was very easy at that point just to pick up and go play with. And so that's what he did. And he found himself playing a lot more and getting a lot better and having a lot more fun doing it because he lowered the level of resistance to playing. He lowered the activation energy. He lowered the amount of energy it takes to go get the guitar and sit down and play it. So that's a little tip I was going to talk about today. And you know what? When I heard that, I said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Because I said, I love guitar. I've played for years, but I haven't played for years. And I wanted to get an electric guitar and I wanted to do all this stuff. And I wanted to get my little boy a guitar and teach him guitar. And So anyway, now, by the piano in our living room, we have my new electric guitar my acoustic guitar, my little boy's acoustic guitar, and a ukulele, all on music stands, out of the cases, with picks, you know, in the strings, and my capo on the guitar. 
sitting right there. I can grab it anytime. And the amp's right there, too. I can plug it in. I can just pick up my guitar. Boom, and I'm good to go. And, you know, playing with all my old Eric Clapton leads. So we lowered the activation energy. A little boy can pick up the guitars. He can pick up the drum and bang on that. I can pick up my acoustic or my electric. Anytime. The piano's right there. Sit down at the piano. and We can just do whatever we want. When it was in the case, tucked away in the closet, out in the studio, I never played it. Now I pick the thing up all the time, even if I only pick it up for five minutes a day, ten minutes here and there. It's, I'm, I'm getting so much better. I'm getting my calluses back. You know, so my suggestion to you is, or actually my question before a suggestion, do you create time to sing? And, you know, I had no idea this, the beginning of the podcast was going to come up. But so let's expand on that. Do you create time to sing when it doesn't mean anything? Lower the activation energy for your singing. Create a place where you can just sing. Create a time in your schedule where you can just sing. Sit down and figure out a way. Go inside yourself and figure out a way to make it very easy to just start singing. To do your vocal exercises. You know, whether or not you say, well, you know, I have to hook up my CD player, or I have to hook up my MP3, or I have to do this, and, you know, by the time I do that, it takes forever, and I, I just don't have the time to do that. Figure out a way to lower the activation energy and make it easy. Create a space where things are all ready to go. You know what I did? I like to do videos, which you'll be seeing a lot of videos now on my, the new website's going to launch very, very soon, the innersinger.com. It's old right now. But there's a brand new gorgeous site coming that will have videos and all kinds of information. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, it's, it's working behind the scenes right now. And within a couple, two, three weeks, it'll be live and it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, there'll be lots of great info and a lot of great videos and what have you. And a free, get, a free video giveaway course that, uh, that you're, you'll be welcome to as well. But anyway, the point of this is I love to make videos. I get a huge kick out of it. It's really fun for me. And as you can tell, I love to talk. So what I did is in my garage, I created a, a studio, a space. My wife likes me to move it out of the way so I can park the car in there. But so I can do that. But, but even when I do that, I have tape on the floor. The backdrops are hung up in the rafters. So let's say even if the car is in there, the lights are off to the side. And as long as it takes me to back out the car, pull a backdrop down, move the lights into position and they're taped already, Put the tripod up, hook my, 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 my what you call it, uh, ca camera on the tripod and close the garage door, turn on the lights and I'm good to go. So I have a studio that probably takes 10 minutes, right? It takes longer to get me presentable. You know, it takes longer for me to figure out, okay, what am I going to wear in this video? Luckily, I've gotten that down to a little bit of a science because I have a little bit of a theme with regards to what I wear. But I've lowered the activation energy to the point where it's doable and I actually enjoy it. Now, before I did that, I was constantly like thinking, where am I going to film this video? What am I going to wear? You know, the lights, uh, how's the lighting going to be? It's, and so it was a constant asking these questions and I never got anything done. I, I never got any videos done. But now that I got the light kit and I learned how to use it and I created the backdrops, I have the backdrops, two backdrops, and they're on the rafters. And I got the phone and now I know how to do everything and I can do it on my own. It's actually really fun. And I've lowered the activation energy to, to such a point that it's, uh, you know, if I have, if I have a block of a couple of hours, boom, I can get so much done. It's really, really cool. So my suggestion then is lower the activation energy to your singing, sing, create time in your schedule where you can sing and it doesn't mean anything about you. I cannot emphasize that enough because here, look, I wish you could see me right now, but consider a world. I used to do voiceovers and <laughs> in a world, you know, I, I would go out on auditions and it would say, please, no in a world voices. Right. And that was the thing back when I did voiceovers. Everything was in a world. But anyway, so no in a world voices. But let's consider in a world where nobody cares. Imagine that just for a second. Picture, if you will, like Rod Serling used to say, picture, if you will, a world where nobody cares. And not in a bad way. It's not nobody cares because everything's lousy. It's like, no, 
Nobody cares. It's just, everything is just expression. There's no judgment. You don't have judgment of yourself and nobody else judges you. People just enjoy their own and your own expression. Imagine that. Create that world in your mind. And from that place, sing and enjoy it and create places in your life where you sing because picture the other world now. Here's the one most of us spend most of our time in. This is a world where sometimes we're good and sometimes we're bad. Where sometimes we sing really well and that means we're really cool and really great and people really like us. And other times we feel like we sing really badly and then we think we're awful people and nobody's going to like us and nobody's going to hire us and who would ever want to listen to us. So it's two sides of the same coin. It's two ends of the same stick, right? It's either we're way up or we're way down. We're way up and happy about ourselves or we're way down and we're in the dumps. Let's give ourselves an opportunity to jump out of that world every once in a while over to this other world where Everybody is just on board with their and your creative expression with zero judgment. It just is. And it is glorious. Okay? Give yourself some time to spend in that world. And then eventually, if we can bring these two worlds together, so even though we're now in this world, we can still bring some of that world in so that even though the stakes seem to be high, we can still, we're still, we've still got a foot in that other place where this doesn't really mean anything about who I am. This doesn't mean anything about me. And I'm going to allow my creative expression to flow through. And I'm just going to sing for the absolute joy of making sound. Cool? So, Let's all create that in our lives. Let's get back to what this really means, okay? It's supposed to be fun, and it means creative expression. It doesn't mean that was good and that was bad. No, that, let's, 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 let's get out of that world a little bit. Let's get into the world of, wow, I just sing because I sing. I just sing because it's fun. I just sing because I love to make sound. Cool? All right. Well, as I always say, all your feedback is totally welcome. Send me emails. You can send me an email at michael at goodrichvocal.com. For some reason, I can't get the the inner singer email to work on my Mac mail. Don't ask me why. It's been months and months. I think I need a new computer. Um, Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I had a great time today. (laughs) <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not even going to edit that cough out. You know, it's what is it? 27 minutes. I deserve to be able to clear my throat, right? <laughs> anyway, hope you've had a great time. I've had a great time. I really look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, bye for now. Hey, send any questions or any comments and anything that you might want to hear or any questions you might want answered, anything you want me to address on the podcast, and I'm happy to do it. Let me know, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Inner Singer Podcast. And please share this with all of your singing friends and head on over to iTunes and subscribe. And if you found it of value, give us a nice rating. Thanks so much.